Hey guys and gals, this is Tommy Woucher and I'm the Farm Finance Doctor. We've been posting a lot on our social media sites about starting to think about your variable cost and budgeting for your 2023 growing season. So I thought I'd take a minute, make a video, and go over some of these budgets about every agricultural university in the various states prepares one of these and gets them out to where their farmers have something to work off of. Uh, most of them do encourage you, as you'll see the ones I've got up here uh, on the right hand side, they're encouraging you clearly to enter your own prices and best estimates for the 2023 season. I was going to use the University of Kentucky, which is the ag school at, here in Kentucky, uh, but the budget they still had up was the 2022. So I decided to go with two schools that had the 2023 and show a little bit of diversity and in, in range from, from down south to up north. They are both here on the eastern part of the United States. On the right hand side, we've got the University of Georgia's budget for the 2023 row crop season. And on the left hand side, we've got the Iowa State University budget. Um, like I said, both of them encourage you to put in your own numbers. I, I also think that's something that's it's very personal to every farm, to every individual. And the closer you can get on this, not only is it going to help you plan for your year, but as you go in and you start working with your, your bankers and different people, it shows that you've put in the thought and it can sometimes help you get a better interest rate and uh, move those relationships along. So we'll get into this a little bit. You'll see some differences and you'll see some similarities. And that's that's what I wanted to point out with this is uh, we start up here and we've got the seed cost. That's a pretty obvious cost when you're doing row crop. Uh, the Iowa State one does a really good job of showing you how they come up with their numbers here. Uh, they've got a seed price per thousand kernels. Uh, that's, that's super easy to come up with. All of you've got your seed tickets out there. On corn, you just take the, the bag price and divide it by 80. There's 80,000 seed kernels in every bag of corn. And that'll give you the price per thousand kernels and multiply it by the amount of seed that you're going to plant in an acre. So if you're going to plant 28,000 like they're showing here, you would multiply that by 28. If you're going to plant 35,000, you'd multiply it by 35. And that's why the change for every individual. Uh, some of us are going to be planting down there around 30,000. Some people are going to be getting up close to 40,000, depending on the productivity and the, the varieties that you're planting. You see that there's a lot of similarity in these prices. Uh, 123 here uh, for the irrigated corn. So we're going to assume they're planting probably close to that 35,000. When you get over here in the non-irrigated acres in Georgia, it's down at $77. So uh, we don't know which variety of corn they're budgeting for, and that, that's why it needs to be customized for your particular operation. But obviously it shows on these acres where they're planning on producing 85 bushels of corn, they're spending less on seed, they're putting fewer seed in the ground, just like the, the Iowa State. When you get down, now one thing you do notice over here on Georgia is they've got a BWEP, which doesn't show up on Iowa State. That's a bull weevil eradication program, uh, and it just shows up on the cotton acres. So that's, that's not a concern for all of you out there, but if it is, it's something you should factor in. Uh, Iowa State goes right into their fertility program over here. Uh, Georgia's got the same line, fertilizer and lime. Uh, nitrogen in Iowa, they're predicting 83 cents per pound of nitrogen. Georgia's predicting $1.10. Uh, P and K in Iowa State is 75 and 72 respectively. And in Georgia, it's 80 and 75 respectively. So the Georgia uh, budget is predicting higher fertilized prices, and that may be across the board in the state of Georgia as compared to the state of Iowa, or it may be uh, in the individual to you, your, whether or not you prepay can change the price of your fertilizer and then how much of it you buy, you can get some of those uh, discounts. The herbicide program, this is something, even though it's not the biggest expense, it's one of those that is really custom to your particular farming operation. Um, Georgia calls it the chemicals, they're at $46 on their corn acres, where Iowa State's at $53.50. So this is around about the same price, but how are you buying your chemicals? Are you buying them in bulk? Are you buying the small containers? Are you going with a name brand program or are you using generic program? Are you going to be treating your corn with fungicide and insecticide one to two times? Uh, so what are your personal decisions and your personal agronomic plan uh, will impact that greatly? Crop insurance. Uh, obviously changes with the your, your personal guaranteed bushels. It also changes, as you can see over here in Georgia, 
it is um, less expensive on irrigated acres than it is on non-irrigated acres uh, because it's less likely to have a, a low production. So those do vary, but they're pretty similar across the board. It's a federally regulated thing. Uh, another thing that I'll point out when I get to a sheet that I have made is this interest. You want to calculate that uh, because if, if you are having to borrow the money to pay for these, uh, you'll see exactly how much you're paying. Uh, Iowa State tells you they're figuring 7.3% on the money at eight months. Uh, interest has gone up across the board, so it's going to be tougher. Uh, it makes these programs, you know, if you can get in on a program where they do offer you lower financing or free financing for a certain amount of time, you can clearly see the value in that. Uh, one thing Iowa State splits it up into the pre-harvest machinery and the harvest machinery. Over here in Georgia, we, we've got machinery and equipment all in one place. And again, these are both con, um, conventional tillage programs. So if you're a uh, no-till program, you would have less of these expenses than some of the other people. Again, that's why it's so important that you, you, you customize it to yourself. Also, Iowa State, further on down in, in theirs, and I'll post links to these in the description so you all can go look at them. They go through how they come up with all these equipment costs. And they do preface this by saying that if you run newer equipment, these costs may be higher for you. If you run older equipment, they may be lower for you. This is just supposed to be a generic average or generalization of the state. So that's why you need to customize it uh, just to you. When we get down here to the bottom, you, you see the per acre cost, uh, fix the variable. Then you simply divide them by the, the bushels per acre that you're anticipating to get your per bushel cost. Uh, I want to take you guys over into Excel and show you a sheet that I've been working with a little bit and just uh, maybe show you a couple of tricks that can help you as you're working on this for yourself. Because we've got a, um, a gross revenue page here where we're projecting the yield. We actually, it's got two sheets. It's an Excel workbook with two sheets. On this one, we're projecting the revenue. And then over on the other, we've got both the direct input costs and the indirect input costs of each area. Over here, we actually predict what the yields are, are going to be, as you can see up here in the formula bar. It has a number. Then on the other page, we will reference the other spreadsheet so that when we're doing some of these things down here, when we're trying to come up with our break even, and we're adjusting these projected yield, it will adjust over on the other page and it will automatically update these variable costs. Just like you saw with the Iowa State and Georgia budget, if you're going to have less production, you'll need less nitrogen, less PK, less lime. Uh, chemicals may or may not change. And then, so we'll go back over here and you'll see some of the same types of things. You see seed costs, you see nitrogen, CPK lime, see chemicals, all that is your direct input. That's what it directly takes to produce the crop. Uh, drying and storage, crop insurance, those are all going to be pretty similar. Drying, storage, and transportation, if you start running your corn early and you're going to dry the corn, or, or some people wait a little later and then don't have that expense, transportation is, is going to depend just on your location, how far is the nearest elevator from it. Uh, miscellaneous, we saw that on the, the other budgets as well. It's just kind of something that gets dropped in there for things we might forget or things that come up that you can't think about. A lot of times those range in the $20 to $40. If you have a better formula for coming up with that for your farm, then it, then it would be best to put that in. One thing I do want to show you on Landrin here is we just plugged in $175 on the corn acre. Uh, that's probably low, especially for most of the productive land. But it, it was a number just to make all these, these formulas work. Some people are getting to where and, and have always done some uh, sharecropping. So what we did over here on the soybean was I'm going to show you how you can calculate your land rent based on uh, your sharecropping. It's for the soybeans. We assumed that it was going to be a 25% sharecropper. Uh, so the landowner received 25% of the crop. So we used... Uh, we start with an equal sign, so it'll be a function. Then you use D6, which is the yield of the soybeans. We reference the cell rather than putting a number, so that if we go back to the other page and change the yield that we're anticipating, it will automatically update this formula. Then we 
have to put that in parentheses, so we'll calculate that first, then we multiply it by our projected price over here on the other sheet. We reference that sale, and if we change the price, it changes the cost. And then this would be the variable cost on one acre of soybeans, assuming you produce 65 bushels at 15.15 sell price, it would cost you $246.19 in land rent. Um, then we get down into the equipment labor. Operating interest is, is pretty simple to figure. You can take your total direct inputs that you're going to have to pay for before harvest, multiply them by your annual percentage rate of interest, and then reduce that to the number of months that you are uh, going to have it borrowed for. Then as we get back to the other page, we can see where it has calculated our total revenue. Right here, the total costs come directly from the other sheet. They're just referenced over from the other sheet. Uh, government payments, that's going to be unique for every individual. Crop insurance payments, that, was, that would be something we would definitely have to set up for you based on your own APHs. Uh, and once your yield goes below a certain amount, that would go up. Once it comes above that, it would, it would go back down to zero. Uh, and this is going to show the, the gross revenue per acre based on, on these, these estimates. And one thing I think is, is very useful to do, and I'll show you how to do that in uh, Microsoft Excel. Let me move my screen over out of the way for right now. We come over here and we have a break-even yield at the projected price and a break-even price at the projected yield. And I'll explain these to you. Is The break-even yield at a projected price is we are assuming that we are correct on this price, that we're going to sell corn for $6.60 and we're going to sell soybeans for $15.15. .15. How low can our yield drop if we sell them for that price and I'll still break even, not lose any money on the acre? The way you calculate that is if you're in Microsoft Excel, come up to the Data tab, go over to the What If Analysis, click on Goal Seek, a little box that come up here, and you're going to set the sale, and you'll just click over here into the box, backspace that out, clear it out. You're going to set sale, gross revenue, so that's B13, click on B13, to value, break even is gross revenue of zero. By changing sale, and you want to change this, the yield sale, so that's B6, just click on B6, click OK here. And it goes in the background, does all this math for you. You don't have to just guess at a projected yield until you get it there. 152.5, we rounded that up to 153. And you're going to look over here, you're going to say, well, you know, now that it looks like it has changed everything on you, that's going to worry you the first time. Don't let it, because as soon as you click cancel, boom, it changes everything back to exactly like it was. You come down here and, and we do the same thing. I'll show you one more example. We'll come over to soybeans and do that. We're going to set the break-even price, assuming that our projected yield holds. So we come back up here, click on the data tab, go back over, click on the what if, what if analysis, go down to goal seek, click on sell, and just highlight that. You're going to set the gross revenue sale for soybeans at C13, click on it, to volume, set it to zero as your break-even, click down here, and you're going to change what? We're going to change Price. So we click up here, OK, goes in the background, does all the math for you, and it came up with 859. It must have changed some things since the last time I did this, so we'll just click there and we'll go over here and we'll update our price to the new one. And there you go. Those are some simple tricks and a simple discussion to get things started on variable cost and starting to plan your budget. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, like the video and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or you would like to go over some of these things further, if you'll make some comments, we'll make a follow-up video and address those comments. And like I said, I'll try to put some links in the description uh, to a few different states' uh, budgeting tools, and hopefully it'll, it'll work for you. If it doesn't, uh, just type in the name of your state's Ag School and Crop Budget 2023.